thanks so much for joining us today on Feeling Good, sponsored by Warren County Community Services. I'm your host, Shelly Abrams, and um, as you can see, we're not in the studio today. We're feeling good on a beautiful day, um, and we're here at Armco Park in Warren County. Today, I'd like to introduce you to a longtime friend of mine, Cindy Rem who is um, just delightful, as you will see. And um, I think that Cindy and I have been reconnected through several organizations throughout the years. Because um, when I reconnected and kind of reintroduced ourselves at the Miami University ILR, uh, Institute of Learning uh, in Retirement Lifelong Learning Classes, we pretty much thought we had known each other either in another life <laughs> or just at another time in our lives. So um, it's so good to reconnect once again, Cindy Realm. Thank you. Thank you. You know, this kind of a day just reminds me of you because um, whenever I have been in classes with you, I have um, either listened to your presentations, watched your demonstrations, or just had very interesting conversations related to um, conservation, related to um, recycling issues and also related to co-housing, which is a topic that we are going to talk about today. So thanks for joining us today, Cindy. It's great to see you. Great to be here. I, um, I wanted to kind of initially start our conversation by saying that um, I'm pretty sure that I met you probably in the 1980s, possibly at Grailville, Perhaps. when the co-housing coalition, a group of people interested in gathering just to discuss the possibility of a development of co-housing at Grailville right. in Loveland. Exactly. Do you recall that? I do. I do. I was part of that group. Yeah. Well, well tell, tell our audience uh, first, before we get into our discussion about co-housing, tell them a little bit about you and your background and whatever you would like to share with share. us leading us to today. Okay. Um, when you have lived this long, <laughs> You have a long, a long part of the journey. Um, I'll start with um, um, when I graduated from high school, I ended up going up to Chicago to an interior design school and graduated from there and came back to Ohio and uh, had a, um, well, I worked in interior design in different studios, but then as I had children, I ended up doing uh, sort of a consultation kind of home, at home for many years and uh, loved that work and um, it was one of my passionate uh, parts of my life. Um, I went back to school, believe it or not, as a late bloomer as all of our children were graduating uh, from college and everybody had a degree and I went, I need one of those. So I started back to school and ended up um, getting a, um, a BA and then uh, I was teaching interior design at Sinclair at the same time, which is kind of an interesting thing. Uh -huh. And then from there I went to, um, on to finish my BA and then finally ended up with a master's out in California on humanities. And that was when I was 55. <laughs> so, um, and well, I loved learning forever, forever. And uh, I'll never stop learning, but. Uh, well, I'm always so inspired by people who decide and are determined to get their degree, right. even after they've raised right. their family. Right. 
So um, tell me again, you said you graduated from high school. Was that in the Dayton area? Yes, it was. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Yes, right. All right. And then I took a job um, as a um, sort of a social director of a retirement uh, independent living facility in Kettering. And they were kind enough and sent me to school to Wright State and I ended up getting a gerontology uh, certification. So I worked with those people and now I are one. I keep telling right. everyone. <laughs> right, right. Um, so that's another passion. I have lots of different areas in my life. I'm very split <laughs> on what I love, so yeah. Well, and then um, you and um, Bob, mm -hmm. your husband, mm -hmm. was also very involved with many of those similar yes. activities yes. And, uh, and so forth, correct? Right. Yes, we, had, we really had a passion for the same sort of sustainability, simple living, uh, environmental concerns, and that's sort of our path. Yeah. That did that? Uh, did you meet through that? Uh, no. Oh, okay. No, I not at all. You no. Had, uh -uh. Sometimes those kinds of efforts, you know, bring, you know, people of like interest together. I right. was just curious because, right. in knowing both of you, I could see how you were a real team. Yeah. Thank you. With thank regards you. to everything that you did. Yeah. Right. Um, okay, well, well, let's talk a little bit um, about uh, Miami and the ILR program because that was the most recent um, meeting of the two of us, kind of the re-meeting mm -hmm. of the two of us. Right. And it was at that time uh, at the VOA Learning Center in Westchester that I remember uh, you and, and, and Bob doing the demonstrations and um, explanations of the reuse, reuse cycle of environmental right. you know, right. kinds of things. And you are the first person that ever, I think that I ever heard mention uh, food deserts because you, you both were involved up in the Dayton area, were you not? Right, right. Right. Tell us a little bit about what you did um, with the organizations, because you did lifelong learning through at the, the University. Um, OLLI program. Yes, up yes. In, at the University of Dayton, uh -huh. yes. Um, I don't know, it, it's just been um, a path that, that I've um, been passionate about and still continue to want to know more. And uh, there was a food summit that was in Dayton every year. and. Uh, I've enjoyed those a lot uh, through the uh, learning and retirement and, uh, and another. Uh, so there's, there's always new learnings in this area and um, um, I, I don't know, I just yeah want to continue that path. Well actually um, the registration for this next term, which is fall term 2020, mm -hmm. uh, begins September 1st. Oh. That and works. this year, instead of um, having in-class mm -hmm. um, courses, everything will be online. Wow. And uh, the catalog itself will be online. So if you go to Miami and then capital O-H dot E-D-U and then I-L-R online, you can find the catalog this year. Yeah. And you can sign up, register, and uh, we just had a curriculum meeting uh, this past week uh, where we talked about people are going to have to learn how to use the WebEx yes. system, which we used the other day. And, um, you know, it, if you're open-minded and willing to learn, which most lifelong learners are, mm -hmm. um, you can uh, really enjoy an even broader variety of courses this year. Right, right. Because we are not limited, you know, through, well, I can get to Westchester, but can I get to Oxford in time for a class? Can I get to Mount Pleasant in time for a class and Hamilton in time for a class? This year, it might even be easier mm -hmm. to sign up for more classes. Right. And right. so forth. So I did want to put in a plug for the Miami ILR program. Great program. 
Great. And then I also recommended you as a presenter for our spring term in 2021. And we hopefully will be back in the classroom by that time at the VOA. But we'll have to wait and see. Wait and see. So with that being said, let's talk a little bit more specifically about the topic of co-housing. Okay. And how that relates to, you know, kind of bringing all your interests together in certain ways. Right. Tell us, first of all, how would you define your experience with co-housing and what attracted you okay. to even attending the organizational meetings? Right. Well, it's been a 25-year dream that sparked uh, when I was out in California. And my husband and I were uh, in Berkeley one evening and walked into a bookstore. And this gentleman was promoting his book. And it was Chuck Durrett. And he started the co-housing movement here in the United States. Um, he is an architect and his wife is an architect. And okay. they lived in Denmark for a while and saw the concept there and loved it so much they brought it back to this country. And over the period of time, and that was probably in the 90s uh, or late 80s, that um, he started this. And since then, he is really sort of the father of the co-housing movement. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's other um, ways that they name the co-housing in, in itself uh, is one aspect, but there's also echo villages, um, house sharing, uh, intentional communities, co-living, um, granny flats, <laughs> um, ADU, which is accessory dwelling units, mm -hmm. tiny houses, which are movable houses. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of ways to look at how to build community and live in a community. Uh, but the co-housing, itself is a regular model that is built around um, individual and private dwellings. So everyone has their own uh, space. And then the main core is a common house, which uh, is a gathering space for so many different activities. It has usually a state-of-the-art kitchen and there's meals that are shared and um, it's coming together with people who want to live a simpler, more sustainable life. And oftentimes the whole focus is uh, with some passion that they have. I mean, mm -hmm. they could be farming or, you know, that sort of that uh, realm. Uh, some, some are religious, some are um, just um, liking to be around other people or want to uh, commingle with intergenerational. Uh, the newest thing that uh, Chuck Durrett came up with was senior co-housing. Okay. That was about five years after he did his original uh, book uh -huh. um, because he saw such a need and people who were wanting to live together and not separate and alone with the whole thing of loneliness and isolation. And so it's like people helping people. Right. And uh, so it's more than just having uh, a dwelling. It's coming, it's an intentional dwelling of coming together with, with other people. Yeah. Well, I noticed that um, the sizes, when I look, well, so I Googled co-housing mm -hmm. to see what the, the nearest co-housing developments were to this area. And um, I read kind of the, you know, some of the general characteristics of those developments. Um, one of which was in Bloomington, Indiana, which mm -hmm. is the oldest co-housing development in Indiana. Mm -hmm. And then another was in Goshen, Indiana. Mm -hmm. Then I noticed in Ohio, there was one in Yellow Springs. Yes, there is. That's kind of connected to Antioch College. And then in Granville, Ohio as well. Mm -hmm. And there are a few, one in Akron. I mean, there's only like six right. in Ohio currently. Right. Right. So um, I got the idea that there were, you know, there was similar criteria that kind of were common to all of those developments. And yet 
um, I think probably different reasons for people in those different locations for even creating this type right. of development. Right. So with that being said, um, you know, Grailville, for instance, is, is a, an opportunity where, again, I think we saw each other and we've discussed that. Um, could you tell us a little bit about how you even start one? if someone's interested? Well, if I could tell you that for 25 years I've been trying to start one and live in one, I will tell you how difficult it is. Uh, we have, um, well, there's three parts to it. I say three legs to the stool. Uh -huh. and one is you gather people together who have an interest, a core group, uh, that are like-minded and want to try this way of living. Um, then the second part is you start the building process and that's the the shaky part because you have to commit at that time uh, if you decide that you're going to have buy the land and uh, how many people and that's the big part uh, and then the third part is how to live in this community mm -hmm. because that's a, a real uh, different part of life that most of us have not experienced of living with others uh, in uh, right in a good in a good way right um, so usually from start to say finish I just have a new book that I just got uh, that Chuck Durrett and another uh, thing Quipper Village in uh, Washington State put together on what it takes to put one of these uh, whole co-housing units together and it okay. takes basically three years already uh-huh okay and what happens I uh, my husband and I had bought some land with another couple we had it all set up, ready to go, and then we found out that the zoning wouldn't allow more than seven houses on this three-acre thing. So that, you know, stifled that. We had another group that we uh, joined with, and they were in the Cincinnati area. Okay. And they were all ready to go, liked them a lot. It was intergenerational, and, and I liked that aspect. And then they got to the point where, where do you want to live? Well, the one said, oh, I can't live in the country. The other said, oh, I have to live near the freeway so I can get on and off, you know, for my job. Another one said, I can't stand suburbia. So, I mean, that all fell apart. Ah. It's very difficult to get that up and going. And then once people commit themselves, you know, that means a financial commitment. And right. then they get right. scared and they say, oh, maybe not now. And so it's tougher than it looks to get one of these going. Um, but as we were talking before we started filming, um, you said that the Midwest is kind of the last area to really adopt that type of development. Right. That, that on the East and West Coast, it's much more popular right. and, right. and it's taken off, right. correct? Right. Okay. Over the period of years, as uh, Bob and I traveled uh, quite a bit, we would stop at these places if we were in that part of the country. Sure. And I cannot sure. tell you how many places that we actually visited, and every one of them is different. Um, you know, um, not all of them are affordable. A lot of people think, "Oh, co-housing, so that must be you know." Really I was reasonable. just going to ask you no, about that. Not no, necessarily. Not necessarily. Okay. It, it okay. can be as expensive as just a regular home. Yeah. Um, there's every type of thing that you can imagine that makes up a co-housing. I mean, people have different ideas and different ways that they have incorporated but basically the core thing is the community house and uh, yeah and there's a um, group down in Abington uh, Virginia uh, called Elder Spirit and they were um, a group of former nuns who decided they wanted to do all of this together and they built a, a whole uh, co-housing for affordable and and people uh, you know of all incomes which was a real interesting uh, concept right and um, we happened to be driving by there the day they did the ribbon cutting just oh. by mistake or not by mistake by god yeah. wank yes right <laughs> and it was just so wonderful uh, and i visited there several times uh, and they have a guest house in the common house and you can go and, and spend time there and oftentimes people who are interested in this will come to a meeting. They usually have monthly meetings. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of get to know the people that are on board there. Right. Um, 
and they also have work days. You just don't come and sit, you get engaged or uh, you come to a social event. So you work your way into, would I like to live here? Are these people, could I be compatible? And uh, everything. Right, yeah. right. So there's, there, it's like a soulful community. Yes. It's not like just moving into no. a no. subdivision and no. hoping you meet people. Right, right. You know the people first. Before you. Yeah. And then and and you discussed and as our audience can hear, we do have a little intergenerational going on today <laughs> in the background, which we love hearing um, just as long as you can hear us. Um, but um, some are intergenerational and others um, are uh, categorized in different ways. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. The the concept of the senior housing has really been a whole new wave because people are living so much longer now. Mm -hmm. I mean, into their 80s and 90s. Right. Uh, so what do we do with all of us? <laughs> you know, we would like to live, as I say, a quality life. Um, and instead of retirement, I like to think of it as refirement. You know, to something that gives you passion and you want to get up every day and go to and work. And a lot of these groups will do that. They will have a core interest that they will work on together uh, and and help the community. I yeah. love that refirement. Refirement. I usually it. say like reimagine, yeah, but yeah, I refirement. like that. I yeah, like that right, as right, well. Right. Well, I know we we chatted how uh, how this all kind of came about as we were chatting um, what a few weeks ago. And I think I said um, so what's on the horizon for you? And you said Tell me in what terms, I said. <laughs> in terms of, well, it's really a stretch, but I really still would like to be involved in seeking out a co-housing development. Right. Elaborate a bit. Well, my, my new famous saying is, if your dreams don't scare you, they're not big enough. That right. is one of my new favorite things too. Right. To, um, and it's a dream that won't let me go. I mean, I put it aside and then all of a sudden it pops up again. And I'm in a new stage of life right now. And I thought, how would I like to live the rest of my life? Uh, I don't want to die before I die. <laughs> and so the concept of living with others with enthusiasm and having fun and uh, connecting and sharing. I love, to, I love gardening and I love good food. And I would love to be with people who would like to uh, engage in that part. Um, I just see so many possibilities. Right. And what I think is interesting, too, is you don't have to start from scratch. That was my thing for the longest time. And I thought, I'm too old for that now. But the idea of taking an abandoned building uh, and, and reworking that into a, a place, There's a, there was a, a old grocery market out in California named Swan's Market and they turned that into a co-housing uh, whole facility. Oh, oh. So you can take uh, things that are already in existence. The main um, number is about 15 to 30 units. Uh, 30 okay, is pretty, right. pretty high. If you mm -hmm. get too much smaller than that you don't quite have a, a you know a good enough group to mm -hmm. to do you know much um, so I'm not giving up on it I'm not it's still in you in would be like the perfect person to have to well I don't know if you want to share contact information but if other people listening to this are interested I mean is there is there a group that you would either seek out or one that you'd like to start or where are I you? I would. I really, I really would. I let it go for a few years and uh, um, I know there's people out there. It's just having it all come together uh, right. and coalesce. Um, as you said, mentioned that uh, uh, part of that Grailville group for right. five years and they they worked and worked. I was part of the Yellow Springs group that started uh, a whole uh, thing, and that was several years. And, and it goes for so long, and then it gets, you know, somehow falls apart or drops or something. But uh, As I recall from the discussions I observed at Grailville, 
I mean, they were talking about straw bale houses and many, um, you know, like eco mm -hmm. system. Yes, part of you it. You know, kind of related right. things. Is is that a part of every co-housing? No. You know, uh, no. group. They all decide okay. what their focus might be, okay. and and that could be their focus. People who would be interested in straw bale houses right. and that kind of thing would be drawn to that. Uh, you know, there's. Um, people who just like you know and and want to work with the land those people would live in community. in fact there is a group um, called agraria in yellow springs agraria uh, they don't live together per se but it's restructuring the land and revamping and that is a whole group of people that would come together for that there's another called Aberlin Springs down in, uh, yeah, that's, we connected I was just, there. I was just going to say, remember right. when we went to the open house right, there? Right, right. How would that, how would you, I mean, is that similar or could that, could there be an offshoot of, of Aberlin Springs? Well, Aberlin Springs could be considered sort of a co-housing. They all have their individual units. Uh -huh. Uh, the main house is that beautiful chalet, Swiss-looking building right. that was on the grounds to begin with, right. and that's sort of their common house, or their um, and it's uh, agriculture. I mean, they they grow food and and that sort of thing there. So that's another concept that that sort of falls within that. Yeah. Right. Right. And for those of you, we're talking like everybody knows where Aberlin Springs is. Aberlin Springs is actually in what lebanon south lebanon right yeah, on the tomorrow i think they yeah have that right on, right where all those communities converge right and um actually it would be on the road that's behind the target target yeah right <laughs> in in south lebanon so right. for any of you that are interested in aberlin springs and wanting nice to check it them. out <laughs> right yeah. right because it was quite a nice i mean even the day that we were there if you recall this horrendous storm just kind of came out of the blue right. and we all like grouped together and we ate together really inside the the right. big hall all of a sudden because right. the rain started coming but it was so impressive most of those houses were larger yes yeah they're yeah. they're a little on the the high price range uh -huh. uh, for you know but it, it fit, fits a need for uh -huh. people who want to live in community. It certainly does. But that's not to say that, you know, perhaps another developer or even that developer mm -hmm. uh, would, you know, if there were enough people that said, okay, I don't need the three or four bedroom house. Right, right. I'd like the bungalow style or, or right. the, you know. Right the ranch or right. you know whatever right. um, style so that that's a possibility right. isn't it there's also a, a group down in Cincinnati Imago okay. and they have taken over a whole street really a really long street uh-huh and uh, they've been in existence for quite a few years now and, and where the people, is that it's uh, on Enright which is uh, would be on the west side of Cincinnati, I guess that would be the easiest way okay. to say. Okay. Okay. And uh, they have a uh, like a nature center, or a center, that would be equivalent to their common house. Okay. Where they do um, camps there for children, and they do a lot of other functions, uh, and use that as their common meeting place. And then people live on that street, and it's a long street. It's almost you know. I don't know how long, but... It's so clearly, well, I say clearly, maybe not so clearly. I'm thinking, is that an urban? Would that be considered an urban, urban right. co-housing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see the skyline of Cincinnati from the... Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. So it's, Which would be another, I mean, several of my friends have, when they've downsized, right. they've decided to move to Lytle Tower right. downtown and right. are very active in the ambassadors group downtown right. in Cincinnati right. or whatever. So, Another way. Yeah, 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 yeah right. for sure. Right. Well, I know that you have some other resources and books and, and different things that you were going to mention. Um, please go ahead and, right. and well, I, elaborate. I had quite a, a library of books and finally I just had to pare down a bit. So I brought a few uh, of my favorites that, that okay. I have, have used and, and I have them. One of them is um, 
the, of course, Senior Co-Housing, which is a sort of a wonderful book. Uh, another one that I said I just got was how this, this co-housing group um, in Washington State put together from the beginning to move in. And that's really interesting in the step-by-step -step process of that. I have one on house sharing. Um, went to a conference and met the woman that wrote this book and I was so fascinated when we traveled to Florida. I called and asked if she would allow me to see what that setup was. Uh -huh. And it was a very interesting one. They've taken um, a big old home and her mother uh, lived in one uh, wing and then she had two other housemates and they considered themselves uh, a little... Uh, golden girls. Yeah, the golden girls right, idea. Right. And uh, it seemed to work very well for them. And I think that's uh, a concept that, that I think could become more popular as there are more people that are living alone. I think there's a third of the population lives alone today. That's a lot of people. And, uh, I and think with this pandemic, the whole idea of isolation and loneliness and... And the impact, impact of what it's doing on our whole system. Right. Uh, yeah. We need people and right. this is a way to do that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I, I am appreciating the fact that you have followed up actually and visited Oh, Some yeah. of the, you know, you've gone out of your way. The road's less traveled, which I love right. um, to right. do as well. Uh, and actually uh, had a first-hand look at some of the And properties. every one of them is different. I mean, yeah, you can't uh, put a rubber stamp on any of them because mm -hmm. they've all decided which way they want to structure their houses mm -hmm. and, and how they want it to, to be. Uh, that, um, yeah, I've been to uh, the one in Ann Arbor. There's, in fact, there's, I think there's two of them up there. Okay. Uh, Silver Sage in Colorado. That's a really interesting one. That was one of the first that, that they elders decided they were going to make their own way of living and uh, they structured the whole thing and it's a beautiful place. Uh, there's one in Ithaca, New York. In fact, there's two of them. Uh, it's called Frog Song and Swan Song. They've named them as units as they've built them and it's uh, another whole concept, you know, that uh, so I, it could be our future living. I, I mean, I really see that. Uh, I have to tell you a, a story that, that I really have enjoyed because I've never given up on this. Um, when um, we moved, uh, well, about six, seven years ago, moved into a, a, an area that had, was in a cul-de-sac. Mm -hmm. And I was so excited. I thought, oh, there's 12 houses here, and then there's another cul-de-sac, and that's another 12. That's a perfect co-housing. It's already set up, they're moved, they're in. And so I moved in and I waited for someone to come to the door and say, welcome to the neighborhood. And no one came. And finally one day I was out the mailbox and I said to my neighbor who was also out at her mailbox, I said, hi, I'm your new neighbor. And she said, hi. I said, um, I just wanted to know that, you know, I'm like to, meet people here. She said, oh, okay. I said, have you lived here long? I said, do you know many of the people? She said, no, not too many. I said, oh, how long have you lived here? She said, 14 years. I went, really? So with that, you knew. I knew that this was not a community. It was a bunch of houses that people all lived in and, you know, right. came and went. So over the period of time of living there, Kind of worked with getting some things going that made it a neighborhood and did you what yes. did you do well first uh we started one of those little um library boxes oh yes put that up and people started using that bringing books and taking books and then other neighbor people from around other neighborhoods came and used it as well oh. so it was very well utilized then we started a thing um called thirsty thirsty which has become very popular uh because we thought, well, people just need to get to know one another. So right. every, you just bring your lawn chair and bring a drink and meet out under the trees in the summertime. And then as it gets colder, you don't have as many connections. But right. um, when I first moved there, there were some younger children and I taught art classes to them under the trees out in the circle. And that was fun. Uh, I did that for a couple summers while they were home. So it really kind of morphed into a little bit of a community. Nothing that anyone ever committed to, but it was neighbors helping neighbors right. eventually. Yeah. Right.
Mm -hmm. Well, good. Well, yeah. I knew that you had done that. I remember my grandkids met you when you were um, involved with a festival in downtown, um, in in the historic part of uh, Mason. Mason. Yeah. And you were doing that. You set up your your art table, and you were doing crafts with the different ages of children, and I thought, boy, I admire the fact that you would volunteer to manage all these different ages and, you know, all these different crafts mm -hmm. um, at the same time, but I knew, too, that, you know, you loved doing that. Yeah, it's and part so, of my life. It's right. who I am. I mean, I just have to do something creative all the time. Right, yeah. right, 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 right. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking that... Um, you're, you're kind of re-energized now about the yeah. co-housing possibilities. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, it does seem, uh, and correct me if I'm, if I'm going the wrong way, it seems like several of the co-housing units or developments have been um, close to colleges and universities. Often. And would that be, you know, is that just coincidental or would you say that kind of, you know, professors or alumni that, you know, are in the area would be more inclined to look at something like that? I think there are people who are still energized about life. And right. I think that brings people to those areas because it's still a very educational component that they can tap into. Right. And uh, I think I look at people who have retired from a position that you know they found they've got so much wisdom and to share that wisdom with others is their gift and not to do that is the sad part you know so i think they they kind of congregate where there would be more stimulation for uh, yeah you know. and i think that's the draw of the lifelong learning classes Absolutely. don't you yes definitely definitely because there have been times when we've been the curriculum committee has been planning classes and I even did this once when I when a speaker was late mm -hmm. I don't know I think you were in that class once and and I was in, going to introduce the person whatever and I stood up and I said and I said so let's just go around the room and everyone just tell us like a, a roads less traveled destination that you've enjoyed and by the time we got around the room I said I told you this could happen. <laughs> you, the people in the class, taking yeah. the class, have so many wonderful right. stories to share. Right. And oftentimes they don't even realize mm -hmm. how, how special they are. I just, I, I ran into that just the other day and I said to someone, would you tell that story at an ILR, <laughs> in an ILR class? Because that's so, yes. you know, that's so right. amazing. Right. So it's just um, things that you think maybe were just happenstance right. are very, um, you know, very much kind of a gem right. to share with others. Exactly, exactly, yeah. Well, I can certainly see your co-housing <laughs> You know, the wheels are going right. in your mind uh, about co-housing. Uh, would there be any future plans or contacts or connections that people could make if they want to find out more sure, about sure. co-housing? Um, they can contact me if, if they want to. Okay. Uh, and uh, what I'd would be, be the best to... the best way? Email or? Um, sure, that's fine. Okay. And that your email is Cindy. Rem, it's C-I-N-D-I-R-E-M-M -M, at gmail.com. Oh, there you Easy. go. Perfect, Easy. perfect. Yeah. And um, as I mentioned, um, this will be broadcast in September. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it just seems like September is a great month to kind of get ideas started. Right. I guess the teacher in me yeah. still is on that cycle where right. I think, oh, the beginning of a school year and more new learning and new, right. you know, new adventures and so forth. Right. Right. So, um, well, I'm energized for you. Thank you. <laughs> and I can't wait to, um, to see the books that you have over here on the table on display and we'll share those with um, our audience. Thank you. So um, thank you for taking the time to You're be with welcome. us today. Enjoyed it. 
I know much. you're feeling good. <laughs> and we hope and we hope that you are feeling good. Bye for now. <laughs>